And we're set for the kickoff. Old Abe's receiving the football to start this game off. Going to the left side to about the 18 yard line. Tanner brought it back to about the 18. So that's where we start this first series of the game for the Old Abe's from Eau Claire Memorial. Catching my breath. Sorry, I was a little late there, John. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a long story, and I'll probably get to it later, but uh, I haven't missed too many kickoffs, and I guess I just barely got this one, so we're good. First and 10, Old Abe's. Inside handoff. A couple of yards on that play. Second down and eight. Max Reynolds on the tackle. Reynolds made the tackle. Just getting all my info out of out of uh, in front of me here. Shotgun formation back to pass. Pass complete to the right side about the 22 yard line but well defended by the cornerback for the Raiders assemble. Did a nice job, nice tackle on that play. So it's third down. Long ways to go, about seven yards to go. Bryson Johnson, the quarterback, he's in the shotgun. Couple receivers to the right. There's the hand, fake handoff. He's gonna throw it deep up the left side. It's gonna be over everybody at about the 45 yard line. Incomplete. He tried to hit uh, Willie Hesse, but overthrew him. So it's fourth down. Good defensive stand to start this game for the Raiders. Hudson Raiders in their home field tonight. It's a little drizzly, a little wet out there, but still not a bad night. It could be a lot colder and will be eventually. But we'll take this one tonight. McDrew to punt for the old Abes. There's a bad punt, almost. Missed everything in that one. It's going to go across the 40 to around the 45-yard line, still rolling. Just outside their own territory, the 45-yard line on their end of the field. And the Raiders will take over offensively for the first time here tonight. Raiders coming in here 6-1 and 4-1. And, and, and Eau Claire Memorial, the old Abe's 3-4 and 2-3. and two and three on the season, so on paper, this is a good chance for Hudson to pick up a victory, but we'll see how that goes tonight. And when things are a little wet, and iffy, you never know. There's a pass just overthrown about the 20 yard line. Kaiser Helterbrand, the quarterback, he's a good one. He's 89 of 145 attempts. He's 61% on the year for 1,229 yards. He's got nine touchdown passes and just one interception. He's got a nice 106 rating for a quarterback. Player in motion, it's option right. He's gonna pitch it out a little further. And uh, Danielson took the pitch and got back to about the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third down and about 10 yards okay. to go. No gain on that play, it brings up third and 10. Well, Joe, glad you made it in here. We got stuck in traffic here, and we're just kind of scrambling yeah. a little bit here, and we're ready to go. Homecoming, Raider Stadium. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. Glad to be here. There's a pass. Open player at the 22. It's caught. This should be a touchdown, and it is. Carls with the reception, and a beautiful pass. Helterbrand put it right on the money. 46 yards out, touchdown Raiders, and the first score on the board. Well, they've been doing it all year. Senior Kaiser Health run, Ben Cowles has really emerged as the primary target. McDevitt, Charlie Pierce, and also Danielson out of the backfield. But Ben Carls, particularly last week against Rice Lake, and even before, is getting tremendous separation. You know, two, three, four steps from defender, and Senior Kaiser Health run put it where it needed to be, when it needed to be there. Touchdown Raiders, great start. And the Raiders will try for the extra points. And it's good. 
Nice kick right through the uprights, which will never be an easy thing to do tonight with a wet turf, wet ball. Good snap. And you do have four good things to happen on these special teams kicks tonight for them to click, and that was uh, well done. So let's take a quick break and be back. It's 7-0 Hudson leading the old Aves from Eau Claire. Back with more after this. All right. The kick, a line drive kick heading toward out of bounds, but it's going to hang in there at about the 18-yard line. Picked up by the old Aves nicely and getting it up across the 25 to about the 27 is Tanner. So a nice job there to get that one while it's hugging the sideline. Eau Claire Memorial. Ready to get going. Needs to get some kind of drive going here, at least to get some sort of field position. Get it across midfield and uh, go from there. There's the handoff left side, busting a couple tackles, getting across the 30. That was Lewis, I believe, with the carry. Reynolds in there. Back to pass, Johnson looking and he throws it kind of between everybody there. Incomplete, not a good looking pass there as he was kind of rolling back into the right. It's gonna be a long third down and about six yards to go. Shotgun formation, back to pass. He's gonna throw it up over to the other side. It's almost picked off at the 40 yard line. Assembo again was there. He could have grabbed that one and might have gone back for the score if he does. So another fourth down, three and out. Dalton is back at around his own 42 yard line. See if they get a good snap here. It is. And he gets a much better punt away this time. Taken by Dalton, and he'll fall on it at right at the 40-yard line. So decent punt on a night like tonight and a good catch. That's the other part of it. Got to make that catch. Dalton did a good job. So the Raiders back. Looking for another score here, leading 7-0. 9-11 to go here in this first quarter. Minnesota Sports Broadcast Network. The Raider offense. Kaiser Helterbrand, the quarterback. He'll keep it himself, go right up the middle. And he gets about three on the play. Smith on the tackle. There's a nice play up the right side. And that's a first down, Helderbrandt. The Jamison pitched his option right and Jamison gets the, uh, or Danielson gets the carry for the first down. First down for Hudson inside of Old Abe territory here. Shotgun, back to pass. Helderbrand's pass is low and it's incomplete. A penalty flag comes flying in from the back judge. Not sure what this might be. Could be a hold somewhere, maybe a defensive hold or something or else uh, yeah, it will be a defensive hold 
on Eau Claire Memorial. First penalty of the game right there. 8.34 to go. First quarter, 7-0 Hudson. There was really no need to hold on that play. The pass was away from there, <coughs> but they threw it right over the middle. And so here's another chance. There's an option pitch left side. Pretty good running room up the left side inside the 25, and then a penalty flag is thrown right at the 25. We may have an illegal block possibly on the Raiders this time. Let's see. I think it's going to be on Hudson. It'll be holding. Holding on the Raiders brings that nice play back. They like to go option either way. Back to the 35-yard line. I think it was on the receiver who's off on that left side. So it's first and about eh, nine yards to go, maybe eight. They look to the sideline for the play. Elderbrand, shotgun, he'll pitch it left side. Danielson, he's pushed out of bounds around the 32-yard line. Picks up about three on the play. Good defense by the old Abes to string that one out. Second down and four yards to go. Probably two down territory here on a night like tonight. Hildebrand's going to keep it. Now pass off or, or pitch left to Danielson. Breaks a tackle at the 20. Cuts back to the inside. Inside the 10 to about the nine yard line. That's all Danielson right there. And a nice pitch at the last moment by Helderbrand. And Danielson did a heck of a job to get there. About a 22-yard pickup. For Danielson, first and 10. There's again, option left. Danielson takes the pitch, weaving at the... Eight, nine, seven yard line, and then finally goes down around the six. Maybe close to the five, and it will be on the five. Second and goal to go from the five. Danielson doing the job. Let's see what Helderbrand does. This time, he's going to keep it himself. Go right up the middle, looking for the end zone. Touchdown. Second touchdown for the Raiders. Helterbrand from five yards out. Makes it 13 to nothing with 7.33 to go. Still in this first. Five yard run. Ben Carls for the extra point try. Good snap, ball down, the kick is up. And it's good. And it's good, and with 7.33 left in the first quarter, Raiders 14. So Carls gets it through, and with 7.33 to go in this first quarter, it's 14 to nothing, Raiders. Let's take a break and be back with a kick after this. And the kickoff is uh, taken at about the 18-yard line and ran out to right around the 22 or 3-yard line. And it's an important drive here for the old Aves. They need to get something going here. They're down early, 14 to nothing against a pretty high-powered offense in the, in the Raiders. So they need to start taking some time off the clock, give their defense a breather, and have a... A good drive here. Let's see what they decide to do. There's a 
draw play up the middle to Jarvis. Jarvis falls forward for maybe a yard or two. Well, quite a, quite a start here for the Hudson Raiders. Two quick scores against this Eau Claire Memorial team. They're, Hudson's heavily favored in this game, really looking to put the old Abes away by yeah. halftime, and they're off to a good start accomplishing that. They're doing a nice job. Back to pass. Now rolling is Johnson. He's in trouble. He's just going to try to get rid of it, and it's going to be, oh, almost caught at the 31-yard line. Good diving attempt out there. Hess tried to get there, but he could not. So it's incomplete, still second and about nine yards to go. Will Hesse, number three, the intended receiver. Personal We're gonna have a personal call, personal foul call on the defense for roughing the passer. I didn't <laughs> I did not see that. He was really rolling for his life back there and just tried to unload it. And Joe, the roughing the passer has been a hot button issue for anybody who follows the I NFL. It's, it's and it's trickling it's, down. It's trickling down into the high yes. school ranks. Lovely, so it's an automatic <laughs> first down for the old Aves. Back to pass Johnson looking left. Now he's gonna throw a right. He's got a man at the 49 and it's complete for about a six yard gain. Matthew ha Nathan Howe with the reception. Number 82, Howe, gets about a six yard pickup. We're gonna get some score updates coming in as we talked about in the pregame. Menominee taking on Rice Lake, that's a big one over at Williams Stadium and also uh, River Falls taking on Superior. Second and about uh, four or five, there's a play that's not gonna go anywhere. Boy, they stacked up that one beautifully. No gain and a loss of uh, a yard and a half, maybe two yards on that run. But just nothing there that time. That was Jarvis, I believe, again on the carry. So it's still third down now and back to about seven yards. They'll send two wideouts on each side, a slot left. And Johnson, the quarterback, in the shotgun, dropping back to about his own 33-yard line. He's going to pass it. It's complete. Penalty flag comes flying in. Might I don't know if somebody grabbed him, maybe a face mask as he went flying by to make the tackle, but it was complete to Jarvis, and let's see what the call's gonna be here. Well, Hudson definitely had him stop there. They, they did not convert the third down, but if they got a face mask on there, that's gonna give the old Aves the first down. They're talking about it now, but uh, if, if that's against Eau Claire Memorial, it's a moot point, and uh, they decline it and kick it away. So let's see what the call's gonna be. I'm talking it over here. Right now as it stands, it still's gonna be short of the first down if they wave the flag away here. I'm definitely talking it over. <laughs> yeah. All right, no flag on the play. So that does not help Eau Claire Memorial as I think the call might have been possible of face masking as a player went flying by, but they decided that nobody else saw it the same way or something. So it's fourth down and about two, two and a half yards to go. Boy, I don't know what you do here for the old Abes. You're down 14 nothing with 5.30 to go. It looks like they're gonna go for it here. Well, you know, you're you're in you're in Hudson territory, and you're already down 14 to nothing on the road. <laughs> yeah. I, I I think you you do go for it here. All right. Player in motion, Hess off the left side. Quarterback Johnson going to throw for it, and it's shot out to the 40 yard line, but it's dropped out there by Tanner. Boy, if he catches that, he's got the first down, and yeah. he's got another 10, 15 yards in front of him. That was not a good catch. That ball should have been caught. Well, and there was some kind of a, a breakdown in the defensive secondary. He should not have gotten that far open no. on uh, on fourth down, but but he did. Um, just want to let our viewers know we did have a little bit of an audio issue to start out that's since been corrected. Thank you for hanging with us. And shoot us an email. Click on the Contact the Booth link below the screen on HudsonBroadcast.com, and we'll get to those emails here hopefully between the quarters. 
All right, Hudson with the football. There's a pass intercepted at the 40-yard line. The receiver was not really looking for it. I think he was trying to hit his running back, Danielson, out in the flats. And an unusual interception there for Helterbrand, just the second one of the season. And so Helterbrand turns the ball over and a big defensive play there by the old Abes who need to make something happen with that. Well, that's, you know, Hudson looking to really, it's too early to say put the game away, but take a, a giant step in that direction. Still sitting on a very convincing 14 to nothing lead, but after stopping them on fourth to turn it right back over is tough. So Bryson Johnson, it's a lateral pass back. Now they're maybe gonna do a second pass, but it's pretty well covered and it's gonna be thrown for a loss. Well, he, he gave it to Calvin Tanner and Tanner wanted to get rid of it, but he uh, had nobody open and decided to eat it and take a four yard loss. Well, this defense for the Hudson Raiders has just gotten better and better. Uh, last week, they, they stopped a Rice Lake team or didn't completely stop them, but held them to 18 points. A Rice Lake team, their lowest point output coming into that game was 36, so they held them to half that in Rice Lake. So, yeah, this, uh, this defense under defensive coordinator Neil Hatfield has really improved. Uh, Jacob Dalton, Assembo, McDonald, Cody Sika, a host of others out there just, just really coming together, really gelling as a unit. All right, second down and about 13, 14 yards to go. Johnson's going to throw another long pass across the field at the 50. It's over everybody. He tried to hit Howe again, but uh, Howe's a pretty good target down there. He looks to be about 6'4 or 5, but he even overthrew him. Is there another flag down? The officials are talking and looking back. They're gonna, it's gonna be against yeah, the old Abe's and they're gonna decline the penalty. Our game against Superior. It was a holding call against uh, Eau Claire Memorial. A few weeks ago up in Superior, we had over 30 penalties. It just really disrupted the flow of the game. Both teams played pretty sloppily and, and a number of penalties were declined as well even on top of that but I uh, hope we don't fall into that tonight, but Hudson wisely declined the penalty, and this defense has really got Memorial's offense on its heels. The defense is dictating tempo, yeah. and Memorial's offense is reacting to what Hudson is doing defensively. Well, it's third down and 14, back to pass Johnson. He's going to throw a, a giveaway pass, and it's picked off at the 45-yard line, now to the 30, and down at about the 24-yard line. Intercepted nicely. That's going to be number uh, 46, Phillips. Tornado Torn Phillips <laughs> with the interception. And uh, the ball's going back the other way. That was thrown up for grabs right there. Not a good pass from Johnson. Well, Torn Phillips, he's another one that's really come into his own. A big six, big kid, 6'3", 190-pound junior. And uh, that was really set up by, by an outstanding defensive pass rush. And it was a lollipop and pass. And the H Hudson had excellent defensive secondary coverage anyway. And now will see if the Hudson... Offense can cash in. It's option rights. Pitch out right side. Danielson, not much there. Nice tackle on the old Abe side there. So that's one of the better defensive plays they've had tonight. And no gain on the play that time for Danielson, who's had a nice game tonight. And he's had a, a, a very good senior season. He had a couple games where he just didn't get a lot of looks and w was shut down. But he's talented. He can move. He can he can make the moves. If they get the ball in his hands, good things will happen. Three receivers left, and then they throw it a short pass to Carls. Carls gets a gain. Looks like about uh, five yards on the play. Again, Hudson Raiders with that hurry up offense. Quick quick to the line of scrimmage. Got the plays called, and there's movement on the line. There's the yellow. Yeah, movement there, and a player Danielson was in motion. This should back up, I think. It's, yeah. no, it's going to be offsides. I didn't think they jumped across. I thought maybe somebody drew them, and that's not the case. So another penalty, third one of the game on, on the old Abe's. Well, call it uh, neutral zone infraction, call it encroachment, defensive offsides, whatever. Yeah. The, one of their linemen came across before the ball was snapped. 321 and counting in the first. 14 nothing. Hudson looking for more. Danielson in motion. Helterbrand takes the snap. He's going to dive forward. 
trying to get that first down, and I think he got enough of it. He needed about a yard. He got two. So Dan or Helterbrand did the job. It is a first down. And Helterbrand's such a load, you know, he's he's going to end with, depending on what happens here and then next week, he's going to end the season with six, over 600 yards rushing for a quarterback on top of, you know, maybe 1,500 yards passing. There's a nice pitch out as he got hammered. Helterbrand a little slow in getting up on that one as he got ripped by an old-day player. Danielson brought down not much gain on that one, loss of yardage. On that play, good defense by the old Aves. They're starting to sniff out that option a little bit better here. They are Austin Jarvis, 5'10", 185-pound senior linebacker, was all over that play and had good penetration, stopped it. Here's the pitch right side, trying to turn the corner at the 10, at the 5, and then brought down inside the 5. It might be Sage Lewis, I think, possibly on the carry. Sage Lewis it on is. The carry. His first carry, or second carry of the game, I believe. And he picked up some decent yardage. He picked up about 10 on the play, but not enough yet for a first down. They're still about a yard shy, I believe. Very impressed with sophomore Sage Lewis. There's the quarterback keeping, and he's going to get it to about the one and a half, maybe two yard line. Helterbrand on the carry. That's enough for a first down. It's first and goal to go again for the Raiders, who are just pounding away here on the old Abe defense. Leading 14 nothing with 2.06 to go. And boy, if they can pump another one in here and go up three touchdowns by the close of the first quarter there, looking, looking good. Let's see if Helterbrand keeps it himself again. Nope, they're going to hand it off, and it's going to be a loss. Boy, Carls took the handoff coming across in motion, and he was hammered by three old Abes waiting for him. That was a beautiful defensive play. And that backs it up to uh, outside the five to about the six yard line. Well, this this old Abe defense, they they can look at the scoreboard here, the beautiful video scoreboard and two year old Raider Stadium, and they can see they're already down fourteen to nothing, and they got to draw the line in the sand here. Second down. Second down from about the six. Goal to go. Miller's off to the left of Helterbrand. They're going to. Fake to Miller, here's Helderbrand, and he's gonna be tripped up right at about the four yard line. What a beautiful defensive play there. Coming up number 23, Ethan Van Grumson. He made the nice play. And uh, it'll bring up third down goal to go inside the five again at about the three. Well, Van, that, that solo tackle by Van Grumson absolutely saved six because he, he uh, shakes off that, he walks right into the end zone. Just a gain of a couple that time. So here's a big third down play and a whistle. Somebody called the timeout, I think, right before the snap. I think I think uh, Memorial took the timeout. First timeout of the game. Stops the clock at 43.8 to go. They trail 14-0. This is a big defensive stand it, for them. They need to come up big here for a couple plays. Well, and then, then the, if they do stop Hudson, and then it's decision time, you know, with under a minute to go, uh, fourth and short. Adam Cowles, through the years, has been one to go on fourth and short and even fourth and long sometimes. And it's almost kind of the uh, keep putting the, the, the pedal on the gas. You're already sitting up 14 nothing, but, boy, you go up 21 nothing. That's that's huge. You again, want to uh, uh, alert our, our viewers. We did have a little bit of an audio issue on, on the, on the get-go. We've since uh, corrected that. And uh, glad to have you on board. A beautiful homecoming night. The weather isn't uh, the greatest, but... A lot of uh, festive things going on. A great crowd out here. The band's going to put on a tremendous halftime performance. You got the little kids down there. I think they call them yep. the, is it the Powder Puff Girls or something. A lot of pink with the cancer awareness. And just a great fun atmosphere here at Raider Stadium. So here we go again. Third down goal to go. Right at about the three-yard line. Miller will line up again. Slot left, now goes slot right. Danielson, it's going to be a reverse, <laughs> outside reverse play, and it's a touchdown for Hudson. Boy, that worked beautifully. Oh, man. They thought they were going to give it to Danielson, and then Sage Lewis comes streaking across, and Danielson just pitches it right out to him. <laughs> for the score, a three-yard touchdown run for Lewis, and it's 20 to nothing. Whoever dialed that one up on the sideline, 
pat him on the back, save that one for the playoffs. That was a play, and it fooled everybody on the Eau Claire Memorial Old Aves. They were all shifted to the left, and just kind of a misdirection to the right. He could have walked into the end zone. At my age, I could have got into the end zone on that one. You know, I'd like to see that. Well, but anyway, almost. here's the snap. The kick is up and good. Carls again belts it through, and Hudson makes it a 21-0 score with 38.9 to go. We got more fun to come your way after this on MSBN. Kind of a low line drive kick picked up by the old Abe's number 22. Andrew Roberts brought it about five yards up. And they're at about the 25 yard line. 33.1 on the clock, 21 nothing the score here on the Hudson broadcast for the Raiders in command so far. Remember last year, John, you and I did oh, the yeah. game down in Eau Claire and it was, uh, it was not pretty. Remember it was 31 to seven or whatever it was. And, and, uh, this is a little, little it's, different it's, story. It's similar, and there's a backstory on that one. We'll talk to that yeah. here in a moment. There's a pitch left side. Not much there for Jarvis. Jarvis has been going backwards. Torrin Phillips is having an outstanding game defensively. He came out of there like a shot and just over-pursued. And that went back. What, four yards? Yeah. No, last year uh, Hudson went to, went to Eau Claire Memorial. Eau Claire Memorial yep. at the time was 6-0. Yep. and Ranked, I believe, fifth or sixth in the state. at the, it, was home, it was their homecoming last year. Mm -hmm. And Hudson went in there and absolutely dominated from start to finish and walked out. It absolutely blew them out. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't even close. I mean, from start, sort of like this game so far, start to finish. I mean, it was early on, too, I'll tell you. First quarter's history. The old Abe's looking to try to try to get some offense going here. Let's take a break. Be back with more Hudson football on your Hudson broadcast. Johnson, the quarterback, back to pass for the old Abe's, and that's going to be picked off. Oh, dropped at the 25-yard line. That would have been a six going the other way. Dalton almost had that one. Well, Jacob Dalton, the senior, one of the leaders, one of the captains, his father, Ron Dalton, have gotten to know president of the bench warmers. We want to thank the bench warmers for all they do behind the scenes. That's a support group for this Hudson Raider football program, and they do a lot of things, spaghetti dinners and uh, money for equipment. we got a, we got a year-end banquet I'm looking forward to in November, so they do a lot of great things, Hudson bench warmers, Hudson, HudsonFootball.org. Check them out. And he's going to pass again to the right side. That's incomplete. Oh, he's having a hard time finding it. He tried to hit Hess that time, but that's also incomplete, so it's fourth down. He's, he seems like he's throwing a long ways every time he's yeah. throwing. It's like to the wide side of the field all the time. He's right-handed, and I think he's more comfortable throwing that way probably. Well, the, the, the Hudson defensive line and, and linebackers as well has just put pressure on him right from the get-go, and you know they're coming at him from both different angles, and he's having to – the pocket is collapsing around him, and, and his good coverage, his receivers are not getting good separation, and it's going nowhere. Punting situation, fourth and about 14, and they get the punt away, taken right at around the – 50 and right up the gut nice job Dalton he's a nice looking player gets it to around the 35 to 36 yard line I think they're going to mark it there so they've had nothing but good field position all first half and it just continues the offense for the Abes not being good for their defense want to get a shout out to grandpa and grandma Capagas Said, go Raiders and go Kaiser. Way to hustle. Grandpa and Grandma Capegas, keep those emails coming in. We got a bunch of other ones to read. And that being Kaiser Helterbrand, senior quarterback. Play action pass going deep left side. It's got two men over there. It's going to be caught by one of them. I think it's a completed catch at the two yard line. Is that Charlie Pierce? The penalty flag is down at the 15. Well, let's see what the flag's going to be, but I think that's a catch. Just kind of a fly pattern down the left side of the. Uh, oh, it's going to be offensive interference. Yeah, I pushed off. Oh, he doesn't think he did that. He thought it was going the other way. 
Yeah, just a straight fly pattern on the, down the left sideline, and Helterbrand shows his arm strength. Kaiser Helterbrand can throw that ball yeah. 50 yards all day long, even on the run. It's a nice looking pass. And his player came up with it, but there was a reason for that, I guess. A little bit of a push. So it's deciding what they want to do here with the penalty. Well, it, defensive pass interference is 15 yards. It, it's not, let's see. Well, here we go. Matt Drath just checked into the game. On the offense, 15 yards. Okay, it is 15 yards. It's 15 yards back the other way, just, uh, just as though it would be defensive yeah. pass interference. That, that's a big penalty. That, that's as big as a personal foul. Yeah, it is. Now it's first and forever. The old Abe sent in Matt Drath, a 300-pound 6'3 senior. To plug up that line. There's a nice catch by the quarterback back there to hand off as they're coming by. Danielson won't go down. He's across the 50 to about the 47-yard line. Nice run by him to get a little more back than he, we all thought he would, that's for sure. Well, looking at the video, you wouldn't be able to tell. We have fog as thick as pea soup out there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been misting and raining for most of the day. Not a very pleasant day weather-wise, but with these wonderful lights, uh, you would never know it. Second and long. There's a pass left side. It's complete at the 40, falling forward to about the 37-yard line. Elter Brent's pass was complete to Carls. There you got a shot at the lights there, and the LEDs are very bright and they're very direct, but you can see the, the mist and the fog coming down. And it is a slippery surface out there, artificial turf. But most, uh, most of these new fields now are. And the turf is so much better than it was the old Astro turf of 30 plus years ago. It's really good stuff now. It's third and 10, Helterbrand back to pass. Nobody open, now he's thinking about rushing and he is gonna be brought down at the 30, shy of the first down, but he did pick up about seven yards on that carry so it's fourth and short about three yards to go i would imagine they're going to go for it here they're it's a long kick if you're going to try to do that so just inside the 30 fourth and about two and a half three yards to go let's see what they do here helderbrand he's got danielson now they're going to switch the play up it looks like and call an audible here danielson goes in motion Rolling right side, looking for Danielson, I think. It's going to be mm. off the hands of Pierce. Tried to hit Pierce at the 20, which would have been enough for the first down. But it, a wet ball went through yeah. his wet hands. we got a couple score updates in Big Rivers Conference action. River falls up 8 to nothing on Superior. That's up in Superior. That's in the second quarter there. Menominee, after Rice Lake had closed the gap to 7-6, to six, have now pulled ahead 14-6. to six. That one happening over at Williams Stadium in the campus of UW Stout. Again, three-way tie coming into tonight for the Big Rivers Conference lead between Menominee, Hudson, and River Falls. We have a penalty flag that was thrown on that play. The officials are discussing this one again. If it's on the uh, old Abe's, it's going to be a first down for the Raiders. So this is a big call here. Otherwise, the ball goes back over and the old Abe's take over offensively with 9.40 to go in this half, 21-0 Raiders. See if we can get the call here. Holding, defense, yes. penalty, the first. All right, we got some of that call. He, yeah, the audio is cutting out on his mic. He does move the ball 10 yards and a first down right at the 20-yard line. Oh, that's huge. <clears throat> Boy, that's, a, that's not good for the old Abe's. They're trying to get out of this half without any more damage. There's the pitch to the right side. Not much there that time. They're sniffing out that uh, that pitch out to the right or left. Danielson has lost yardage the last couple times they've done it. He lost about three to four on that play. The Hudson offense overall is, is doing very well. Helter Bears have an outstanding season. I think as we get to towards the end of the regular season and into the playoffs, this running <laughs> game needs to get better, and that's the bread and butter of Hudson football through the years. There's the handoff right there side, and a nice move at the 18, and then falling out of bounds inside the 15. Miller, the Miller with the carry. 
That's his first carry, Miller. That being David Miller, the 5'10", 170 pounds senior. He's seen some action really playing the the second uh, secondary back to Cole Danielson out of the backfield. Also, Sage Lewis is starting to get more action too, the sophomore. Eight of about 10 on the play for, for Miller. Good job, still now third and about four. Clock stopped at 9.04 with that play out of bounds. Elterbrand is gonna keep it himself and he's dropped. Boy, that was beautifully played. Coming in number nine for Eau Claire. That's Gerber, 6'3", 220 pound sophomore. Ooh. He's a he's an animal on that play. He just grabbed Helderbrand and put him down fast. And that's not an easy task to do. Kaiser Helderbrand's a big boy, athletic. He's 6'1", 215. No gain on that play, fourth and about four. <coughs> they're gonna go for it here. Clock running eight and a half. Now they're gonna call now a timeout. Nice. Hudson takes the timeout. They wanna talk about what they wanna do here on fourth and about four yards to go. And that'll be good for the old Abe defense. They've been out there a while tonight and uh, they need the breather. I wanna say hello to Paula Barclay. It says, go Raiders, happy 12th birthday to Kylie. We also want to say hello to uh, to Adam. Adam's the score update for the Menominee and Rice Lake game, and we just did give the uh, the updates. We can repeat those. Menominee is up 14 to six on Rice Lake. That's that's a huge that's a huge game for Hudson, and here's why: because if Hudson, Rice, and Menominee and River Falls all run the table, they're tri champs. Okay. Okay. If Hudson, if Menominee gets beat tonight and Hudson and River Falls run the table, Hudson gets the conference championship by virtue of the fact they've beaten River Falls. If Hudson falls and it's a tie between River Falls and Menominee, River Falls gets it. Here's the catch. If Menominee and, if Menominee and Hudson tie and River Falls gets beat like tonight, the championship goes to Menominee by the fact Menominee beat Hudson. So a lot of different things can uh, can happen here in the last two weeks. Good race. you know we, That's what you want for a, for a conference race come right down to the last week. Fourth down, here's the play. Rolling to the right, Helterbrand gets away. He's got a chance to get the first. He's got it. Now he's looking for the end zone. Oh. And he stumbles high head over heels and gets to about the one yard line. What that. a run by Helterbrand. First down, goal to go for the Raiders as he went, what do they call it? T over, yeah. yeah, whatever. Over tea kettle. Yeah. That's the kind of hits you see in the NFL films. Good thing he's young. If I got hit like that, I'd break in half. That's right. Fantastic play now, Elderbrand's gonna keep it himself. Dive into the end zone, touchdown again, Hudson. Well, he just went right behind yeah. his center. I think it's Ben Gilbert, and uh, got him into the end zone from one yard out. Fantastic play, two plays in a row there by Helterbrand to get the score after he set it up. Now Carl's for the extra point try. There's the bleacher creatures. Hudson tradition. Kick is up and good again. Makes it 28 to nothing. Hudson in command of this one with 8.09 to go. And let's take a break and be back with more football, Hudson football on your Hudson broadcasts. Well, it's all, all Hudson tonight, folks, right now on a drizzly foggy evening it is you're uh enjoying this broadcast in the uh friendly confines of your <laughs> living room or family room or wherever you're enjoying this broadcast well they're Maybe. watching that big guy's barbecue and the village inn and the hudson bowling center and the willow river and here there and everywhere thank I, you each and every one of you for joining us tonight i will say this there is a good crowd on hand here tonight there's a lot of people here in spite of the weather getting soaked but loving it Gamers are here. 28 to nothing. 8.09 to go in this first half. Zuli ready to kick. Zuli's really taken over the kicking duties full time from Carl's. They kind of did a, a rotation at the early, but uh, okay. it's been all Zuli here the last few weeks. He just kind of does a chip shot usually right up the gut. It's taken at the 18-yard line by the old Abe's 
And uh, the penalty flag flies again. Looks Take like three. it's uh, two flags now are in there. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. That was Gerber, I think, on the uh, carry back. The officials meeting again. Yeah, Too like, many hankies in this game. I know tonight. it. Well, it, it's, it's starting to shape up like that superior game, and I swear it was – we went through a spell where there was a, a, a penalty on about every other play. I mean, it was <laughs> it was really a pretty awful two, – two good teams, Hudson Superior, both uh, quality football program, especially Hudson, but it was just one of those games that, my goodness, flag after flag after flag, 30-some th penalties. Oh, my. Well, let's not uh, do that tonight. Base miles. Base miles. On the kicking team. Offsetting First penalties. So it's uh, like nothing ever happened. We're, <laughs> we're going to pretend nothing happened on that play. I, I've done that many times with many things, so yes. it's nothing new to me. 29-yard line is where the old Abes will start. And, man, do they need to get a drive going here. With 8.03 to go, at least take the, some time off the clock, get some field position back. Yep. There's the inside handoff right across the 30, 31 yard line. I think that was Jarvis. Mm, no. I think that was actually An Andrew Roberts with the carry. And I'll tell you, this this is this is pretty sweet because it, it it's shaping up like. Uh, like last year here, and I'll comment more on that uh, after this play. Quarterback off to the right. Throw is complete. Bryson Johnson with a nice completion that time. Look, I think he had ta Tanner. Calvin Tanner, 5'10", 175-pound junior. So Tanner with the reception. That's one of their better offensive plays and one of the better passes tonight for Johnson. And fourth completion. To follow up on my comment, when Hudson first came in the Big Rivers back in 86, you know, teams like Eau Claire Memorial just had their way with them. And that went on for many years, so <laughs> the tables have turned, and it's rather enjoyable as a Raider fan to see this happen. Johnson throws a quick out. Not much there. Loss of a play, a yard or two for Jarvis. He was open for a second, but he had to bend down to get the ball, and by the time he picked it up, two uh, Raiders were there. McDonald was in there. So a loss of a couple on that one. Well, this Raider defense had just been converging on the ball aggressively very, very well. The linebacker play has been has been superb, led by Corey Sika, among others, and the defensive secondary has just played outstanding as well. Shotgun quarterback's going to keep it. He's got some room. 45-48. He's stopped right there. Nice job coming up. Sika made the hit on that one. He hit Sika, and he stopped like a wall. But he did pick up about uh, nine yards on the play. Nice run for Johnson. That's, I think, his first carry of the game. Got another score update. Rice Lake has closed the gap. The Menominee Mustangs up 14-12 over the Rice Lake Warriors. 8.29 left in the first half. And as we mentioned before, conference title implications on the line in that one. Big third down here for the old Abes. Third and about five. Roberts slot to the right. Back to pass. Johnson looks over the middle. It's incomplete. No nice diving attempt by Tanner. He kind of hauled it in, but after it skipped a little bit on the turf, it's fourth down and about four and a half yards to go. And well, I think Tanner wants the offense to stay out there and see if they can get a first down. It looks like they're going to try it. I think when you're down 28 to nothing, your hand is forced at that point. Yeah, or else, yeah, I suppose. At, at, at this, You could try to pin them deep and just yeah. hope they don't get anything uh, the rest of the half. But what at midfielder. You're going to give them another good field position here if you can't convert this. There's a little swing pass. It was partially tipped, picked up by Tanner. Tanner gets across the 50. They're trying to push him. Boy, he and at the last effort, I think, got the first down. Boy, smart play by their offensive lineman coming in there and just giving him a big two-yard push. And that was enough to get a first down. Beautifully done. It really was. And he, he kept the kept the legs pumping. That's the fundamental thing you want to teach your, 
your backs and your receivers, you'll keep that low center of gravity and keep the momentum moving forward. And he was able to get that. They had him stopped a good <coughs> yard and a half shy yeah. of the first down. And there was a tip on that play, and he scooped it right off the uh, yeah. right off the turf. Nice play by him to come up with that ball to begin with and then to do what he could to get that, that kind of yardage. There's a pitch out right side to Roberts. Roberts takes it across the 45 to right around the 41-yard line where he's pushed out of bounds, picked up about six on the play. Keep those emails coming in. We had some nice emails. Love to hear from you. We'll get to them at, uh, at halftime here. Very easy to do. Click on the Contact to Booth link and HudsonBroadcast.com. You can let us know who you are, where you're listening from, who you're cheering for tonight. Love to hear from you. Rolling out, Johnson. Going to throw a deep pass up the middle. He's got a man out there, and he drops oh. it at the 10-yard line. Would have been a big play for the old Abes, and it was just completely dropped by Hesse. And here's something I like. You probably caught the tail end of it there. Jake's Assembo helping his opponent up. And Assemble really got beat on the play. That was a very catchable ball. Yeah, We like to see that. And, and that's one thing I've seen consistently through the years with Hudson is, is good sportsmanship. I know the coaching staff stresses it. The WIA certainly stresses uh, sportsmanship for all teams involved. And uh, really nice to see. You don't always see that <laughs> no. in, in this game. So big third down play. They got really two plays to try to get five yards here. Let's see what they do. They're going to change things up. Johnson running up and telling a couple players what the call is going to be, and now the whistle blows, and I think they're going to take a timeout here before that ball is snapped. They do. Second timeout for the old Abe's. 5:27 to go. It's 28 nothing. Raiders lead it right here on Hudson Raider broadcast. All right, Johnson's going to throw a high arcing pass, man-to-man -man coverage, and it's complete. At the 14-yard line, Tanner with the nice catch. And what was that? About a 33-yard 30, pass to Tanner. That's one of the few things that's gone right offensively for this old Abe's. Yeah, that was man-to-man -man coverage down there, and he just watched it all the way in, and they finally hung on to a ball. They've had two big drops in this yeah. first half. So now they're in business here. 5-12 to go. Let's see what the Raider defense can muster up here. Johnson again throwing over the middle. He's got a man wide open end zone. Touchdown. Old Aves. Boy, that was well done. Nathan Howe, I think, was the receiver. Howe's the big man who got behind the defender, the safety back there, and uh, just hauled in an easy touchdown. That was well, well thrown, well it caught. Was. Nice design play. That was the best play of their game right there, other than the, the big pass we just had. Well, yeah, because Hudson's just dominated them. I mean, that's, that, that's the first thing that's really gone right for them all night. So now the extra point try. Welke. His kick is good. Colton Welke boots it through, and so we have 5.04 now on the clock with the... Uh, the old Abe's finally getting on the board. So nice job by them, a, a nice drive. They almost were stalled at the 45 yard line, but but that that push of the line yeah. to, to get the first down kept the drive alive. Well it did, and they, they got about a good yard and a half on, on that push. The Hudson defensively converged and had them stopped. And, you know, if it stopped them right there, that drive ends right there. So I want to take this opportunity to thank some of our sponsors. Hudson Bench Warmers, as, as always, the Hudson Boosters, the youth program, are working on something to do, be able to do their championship games next weekend. i got to talk to Ken Stelzner and uh, arrange that, but they do wonderful, wonderful things. They run our 4th of July booster days and the big baseball program, football program. They do a lot of things, involve a lot of kids, and a lot of people putting in a lot of time. It's one of the great things of our community, that, that Hudson Boosters organization. Check them out on the web at Hudson Boosters. Dot org. Also want to thank the Willow River Inn, the Village Inn, Big Guys Barbecue, <laughs> the Hudson Bowling Center, McDonald Insurance, Hudson Ford, and Wisconsin Credit Union. They bring you this broadcast. Good night for bowling at the bowling center. You bet. Big kick. This time uh, goes into the end zone for a touchback. That landed at about the two-yard line. That was a heck of a boot. 
That was a nicely done kick by that young man. I think that was uh, Welke again, senior kicker, 5'10". He's got a leg on him. That was oh, yeah. uh, that was well done. So finally, this this will be the first drive I think Hudson has had that wasn't starting inside yeah. their own forty yard line. Well, the Huds Hudson's won the the time of possession. They've won the battle line of scrimmage, and they've won the field position battle. And that's why they're sitting up twenty eight to seven. Elter Brand will hand off up the middle. Not much there. Trying to string it out is Miller. Miller does a Good nice run. job. Gets it to about the 30-yard line where he's pushed out of bounds. Right uh, heading toward that first down marker, but he broke a couple tackles with his speed and good athleticism, and uh, he picked up about eight on the play, it looks like, I think. Let me see where they mark it. Is there a penalty flag down that I'm not aware Kinda of? Kind of hard to... Well, we do have a flag on the play. Okay. One thing we want to tell our viewers here... For those of you that follow the NFL and can remember a few years ago, some 30 years ago now, the Eagles and the Bears played a playoff game <laughs> at, uh, at Chicago, probably about 87 or 88, something like that. It's called the Fog Bowl. Yep. This isn't that much different than that. I mean, we, we've got a heavy mist and fog setting in, not quite as bad as that, but uh, it's, it's visibility is low tonight. I could see it crossing the bridge, that's for sure. There's a pitch out right side, and nice defense again. They they got it off to uh, Danielson again, and Cole lost yardage again on that pitch out. The old Abe's have have got that play down now pretty they have, good. They have, and they've they've bottled up Cole Danielson, and then multiple times earlier this year, you know he. He had huge gains on that play, and I think offensively, the the, the Raider offensive line, you know. Got to do, try to do some different things to open up some running lanes because the running game overall has not been that good tonight. A couple receivers to the left. Danielson in motion. Back to pass Helderbrand. He's got a man open. Carls, Carls at the 28-yard line, and he falls forward to the 30. Right at the first down marker should be enough for a first down. Kaiser Helderbrand is so poised back there in the pocket, and when he when he's has time, and he did, he did that time, you know, his arm strength and his accuracy and the maturity and poise is, is as much as anything. And then he's a running threat on top of that. You know, he's he's an all-conference guy, and he, he's going to get some all-state mentions. He's got to. Well, he's completing 61% of his passes. You know, here, here he is again keeping at it this time. He's at the 40, 45, 50, broke a tackle, 45, 40. He's up the left side. He's at the 25, 20, one man to beat, 10, 5, touchdown. There it is. What a run by Helterbrand. He is coming into his own on his senior campaign on homecoming night here at Raiders Stadium. He's been the team leader all season long, and he is just, that's the frosting on the cake right there. Helterbrand with his touchdown, his third touchdown of the night with a 70-yard run. Man. That brought fans to their feet here on a cool night. The bleacher creatures are out there. What a festive atmosphere here tonight, despite the terrible weather. High snap, nice holder, got it down, and it's put through nicely by Carls. 35 to seven, 355 to go. More Raider football on your Hudson broadcast. Zui to kick for the Raiders, just a pooch kick, lands at the 30, picked up at the 20, and across the 25 to about the 27 yard line where the Old Abes will take over. Still time for them with 3.49 to go in this first half after an electrifying 70 yard run by Helterbrand. That is highlight film stuff Abs right there. Absolutely, that, that, that one will make the cut for the, uh, the banquet here and still got to get the details. Looking forward to it, had a real good time last year, emceed it and if they uh, are so gracious, I'd gladly do it again. We'll have to see, had a whole lot of fun. That'll happen sometime in November, really celebrate the season. And we've got a whole lot of season to go yet, even though we're getting towards the end. Playoffs just around the corner. There's a delayed snap, and that's gonna be motion, I think, on the old Abes. The ball was snapped late. Everybody else was moving, but the center and the football. Some more score updates coming in. River Falls up 16 to nothing in Superior. That one is at the half. Menominee and Rice Lake 14 to 12. Menominee still holding that two-point lead. That one's at halftime too. 
Chippewa Falls, as expected, rolling all over Eau Claire North, 35 to nothing. 3.48 to go first half. It's all Raiders here, 35-7 over the old Aves of Eau Claire Memorial. Johnson to pass over the middle. It's, boy, it was almost caught and then almost intercepted. And a big hit out there. My goodness. I think that was Dalton with the big hit. And that jarred the ball loose from Hesse. This window's closed and I could hear that through the window. <laughs> yeah. Kaboom. But he popped right up. It was a good clean hit. Nothing, you know, penalty wise, uh, just a good clean hit. Second down, 15 yards. Johnson looks right. Out to the flat it goes. It's completes. Get across the 25 to about the 26 yard line. Roberts with the catch. Seen a lot of nice Hudson Raider gear in the place in town to get your Hudson Raider gear. On site apparel, the Hudson Raider Clothing Company. Lori down there has marvelous stuff shirts, sweatshirts, hats, you name it. I was in there a couple weeks ago and. A lot of great stuff, particularly here for homecoming as the, the colder weather is getting here. Get those sweatshirts and coats down there. Support your Hudson Raiders. On-site apparel right off Locust Street. But your son would look good in some He of does. It. I got one from there for him. Good. Three minutes to go. Back to pass. Looking right. Long pass over everybody. Trying to spring. I think that was number 83. For War. Claire, that was uh, McDo. Brendley McDo, 6'3", 230-pound. He sort of looks like yeah. Howe, both about similar size. Your Memorial's got some big kids. <clears throat> yeah, they do. I'm looking here at the roster, Matt Drath, uh, I think you mentioned 6'3", 300. Six, three, 300. I wouldn't like him chasing me off out of the lunchroom after looks, I ripped off his lunch money. No. Looks like a blitz coming here, and here it comes. Trying to get into that punt, and he does get it away nicely. They're going to let it drop. There's a block from behind, it looked like, but nothing called. Ball's going to be dead at about the 46-yard line. So 2.45 to go now on this. Raiders get the ball back, looking for more. Well, and again, as we get into the second half, there's a potential of a, of a running clock scenario. with uh, If there's a 35-point differential... That will go into effect in the fourth quarter, I believe. And Hudson, uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota are different. One starts it in the second half, one starts it in the fourth quarter, and I always get confused which is which. But anyway, if there's a 35-point differential at some time in the second half, that you yeah. know the, the running clock scenario uh, is certainly a possibility. All right, here come the Raiders one more time. See if they add to their lead here before the half is over. There's the option. And then, boy, a little pitch ahead. Nicely done. Danielson at the 43, spins around, gets inside the 40 to the 37. It was going to be a pitch, but he actually threw it forehand. Now, was it a legal pass or not? The officials are going to talk about it, or was it something else? A penalty flag is down. Well, if he was past the line of scrimmage and it was a forward pass, it's going to come back. While they're sorting it out, we want to say hello to Louise Gilson, watching the Raiders from Fort Myers, Florida tonight, supporting Hunter Danielson. Go Raiders, touchdown Raiders. It's 83 degrees there at Fort Myers. Yeah, big deal. We don't want to hear that. Do I we? think, is it 43 here? Maybe. But everybody is soaked. That, that I know. It is an illegal pass. He yeah, was past the line of scrimmage. Screen. I figured. So this will be, what, a loss of down and yep. yardage, you think, or something here. It, it was originally designed as a pitch play, and there was kind of some indecision there. But by the time he threw it, it was a forward, number one, it was a forward pass, past the line of scrimmage, and the referee was standing right yeah. there. All right, so that makes it uh, second down and 15 yards to go. Hudson picks up their third penalty. Boy, it was a very uh, nice, it was very uh, Aaron Rodgers-like the way he did that. But It was. We got another was, email coming uh, in after this. It was certainly past the line of scrimmage, unfortunately. Danielson in motion. They're going to throw it over the middle. It's complete at the 50 to about the 48-yard line. Pierce on the reception. He picks up 
about eight or nine on that play. That being Charlie Pierce, and the Hudson Raiders not content to go quietly into the into the night at halftime, sitting on a 35-7 lead. They're up there firing. So Pierce with the catch. Back to pass, they're gonna throw it to the right. It's complete at the 39 yard line and dragged down right there. That was to Lewis. Well, Helterbrand is just coming into his own. So much poise in that pocket, like I mentioned earlier. When, when that protection is there, he can just pick you apart. And you don't really see that a lot in high school. No. Not that type of maturity. And the combination of, of the poise and maturity, the arm strength, the field vision, the ability to, to scramble, the ability to run. It's the complete package. There's a nice inside handoff this time. Boy, one man to beat. He's into the open. That's David the 15 Miller. Miller. He's got a chance, but he gets down at the four or five yard line. Let's see where they mark it. What a nice play by Miller. About a 34 yard run. Well, it's gonna put him, Miller. Put him at first and goal. And the Raiders knocking on the door again with 1.45 to go. Good to see that Hudson running game get going. They've had some struggles here, but that's a real nice run by Miller. And the option left, Helterbrand turns it up, looking for the end zone, touchdown! His fourth <laughs> touchdown of the night. Helterbrand having a heck of a night. Five yards out, the keeper on the option, and he stretched his long body out to just get that ball across the, the plane. You know, years from now, you see special players like this and you reflect back and you say, you know, I remember on homecoming night and four touchdowns in the first half and, you know, certain players have that aura and Kaiser Helterbrand is certainly becoming one of those players. Well, they're going to muff the pun here a little bit. They're going to see if they can get in the, the pylon and he, he does it. the job. Fantastic play. That was uh, the holder who picked it up and ran with it, I think, is it Belland? Easton Belland Easton is Belland. the holder. And Belland runs it in for the two-point conversion. And I don't know if that was, it, it looked like it was planned. It looked I, like I it don't know was, why you'd necessarily do that, but. Uh. <laughs> I think he struggled for a second on that and said, I think we're going to try something else here. Well, and again, you know, it's it's been misting, raining. It's it's a, it's a wet football. It's a wet surface. And you don't you can't really see as much by the video, but it's it's uh, <laughs> it's a very wet, uh, foggy foggy night here. Penny Christensen emailing in, love our Raiders and Penny. Son Cole Goodbow is playing at University of Wyoming, and boy was he fun to watch. <laughs> Tremendous player. I wonder how he's doing, Penny. If you can shoot us an email, and when you get to, when you leave high school and you go to Division One, you're a player, and Cole yeah. was a player. All right, here's the kick. A little pooch again. Right at the 25, and they get it close to the 30. Clock stops at a minute and a half to go in the first half. It's all Hudson tonight. 43 to seven. They started off. You run out of ink. I'm running out of ink. <laughs> at the 10 minute mark of the first quarter, a 46 yard pass to Carls. The extra point was good at that point, and then it just went down from there. Helter Brand, uh, Lewis with the run. Helter Brand again, one yard run. Old Abe's got on the board with Howe, a nice reception. And then Helter Brand and Helter Brand again and again. There's the ball loose, and they, Old Abe's luckily get back on it. It was uh, dropped back there for a moment. Well, and what you're going to see here in the second half, you're going to see Hudson really empty the bench, as, as well they should. You know, everybody uh, practices hard, and some players are starters, and others are backups. I think a lot of the backups are uh, going to see some significant action in the second half, and how appropriate on, on homecoming night. Happy homecoming here tonight so far, that's for sure. Clock running with one minute to go in the first half. Not soon enough for the old Apes. <laughs> that's for sure. Back to pass Johnson. His pass is wide left, incomplete. Of course, if you're a Milwaukee Brewer fan, you're all smiles as they knocked off Colorado four to nothing. Oh, there you go. Earlier, just before the uh, start of this game, to move up uh, two to nothing over the Rockies, and things looking good down there in Brewtown. 
They're heading to Colorado for a game on Sunday up 2-0. Uh, How are my twins doing? Oh, they're done. They're, they're done. They're, their stuff's packed away, and they called it a year. Son of a gun. <laughs> Always next year. All right. There's a quarterback keeper by Johnson. Looked like a high tackle down there, but no flag. Well, and, and speaking of that, and we won't get into it too much, but Paul Mulder was relieved as manager, and I, I – I completely disagree. I think Mulder is an outstanding manager. He was man too. he was manager of the year last year. Let him into the playoffs, and now he's out of a job. I'm not sure about that, but another famous Cretan grad. Yes, yes, Joe Mauer and myself, and yep. And Joe you're Maurer. you're you're right in the league. I you know when I think of Cretan yeah. grads, I think of Joe Dunford. Right in the top five. Uh, you know uh, Chris Wanky, um, Paul Mulder, and you're right in. All there. right, so maybe I'm in the top you're, fifteen. You're top five, my book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God bless you. 43-7 to seven the score, 6.6 to go. We really called the timeout here, huh? <laughs> All right. That's, I think, on the uh, old Abe's. Yeah, they had the wrong personnel they had, or something. Uh, they got a whole bunch of new players out there. No, just talking about uh, baseball, and, of course, the regular season is done. Playoffs, uh, if you like playoff baseball, you had four games today. And uh, Boston and New York going at it, and the Dodgers and um, and the Braves will be the game number four. And I certainly love postseason baseball, particularly when your team's in it. Milwaukee hasn't been in it since seven years, so it's a, a nice, uh, nice surprise, and they're looking good so far. A lot of fun in college football. We can talk a little bit more about this. You got homecoming at the yeah. U of M, my my alma mater. Uh, tomorrow they're taking a big game against Iowa. 43-7, back to pass. Johnson looking to the right. It's going to be complete at the 40-yard line to right at the 37. Nicely done. One second left. I don't think get up there. 22-yard <laughs> pass, or actually a 32-yard pass play. The chain guys are running. They get the play off. They're going to, yeah, they're playing. I don't know what's going on there. Players stopped playing, but they're going to keep playing here, and there's a ball that's going to be out of bounds, incomplete to end the first half of play. But uh, a good, a really good oh. first half for the Hudson Raiders. They really could do no wrong here in this first half on homecoming in Hudson. They have a 43 to seven lead over the old Abe's from, from Eau Claire Memorial. And uh, boy, just a fantastic yeah. performance offensively, defensively. They did a great job all over the place. We had to wonder how Hudson was going to react coming off that big win on the road against uh, a Rice Lake team they were they were tied to, with for first place here. And, you know, you're home, you're the favorite, it's homecoming and all that, but one of the worst things you can do is overlook your opponent, underestimate your opponent. That was not the case tonight. They established their dominance right from the get-go. We're going to take a break here and then come back and catch this wonderful performance by the Hudson Band. We'll be back with more Hudson football right after this. And a queen of homecoming 2018 is Mary Sekulu. Let's hear it for our 2018 homecoming royalty princesses. Congratulations. All right, up now is the Hudson Cheer and Stunt Team. They hope you enjoyed seeing the junior cheerleaders dance and cheer with us tonight during the first half. They are also collecting donations for the American Cancer Society. Middle school cheerleaders are walking around with buckets to collect any spare change you may have. Enjoy the show.
Let's hear it for the Hudson Cheer and Stunt Team. Tonight, for your halftime entertainment, please welcome the award-winning Rainier's Dance Team. The team will be dancing to a routine choreographed by the team's senior class members. Team captains are Olivia Tennant, Haley Wilson, Ashton Randolph, and Chloe Hoff. The Raiders are coached by Kristen Vandenbrookie, Monica Servi, and Kim Hoff. Let's hear it for your Raiders dance team.
We want, to, we want to say hello to Marla, Sue, Sarah, and Karen. Said, Mom's on vacation watching from Sanzibel Island. We are there in spirit, but it's a lot warmer here. Where yeah. is, if, if you can email in, where is Sanibel Island? It sounds good. That's yeah, got to be Florida. Florida? Okay. A lot here of we islands go. Down there. There's the kickoff. It's going to go out of bounds. Penalty flag <laughs> flies. <laughs> he did that before and it stayed in bounds, I think, and now. And then he had a good kick down to the two-yard line, which stayed in bounds and was a touchback. But that one, uh, not so much. So here we go. 43 to seven, the score. 12 minutes back on the clock, and uh, we'll see when you know if we get to a running time situation. Probably will be the fourth quarter, we're guessing. But yep. but if the Raiders are still up by uh, 35 points, right? Then correct, and that that's the, I believe that takes place in the fourth quarter. We also want to say hello to a good friend of mine, Ron Thompson. Watching from Chicago tonight, Ron, a former football player himself and played in college at Mankato and high school at Amory and one of the great guys. His sons are watching down there. Glad to have you on board. Thanks for the, uh, for the email, Ron. All right, we got some new guys out there, and we'll pass on as many as we can as we go, but Andrew Ross, I believe, is the quarterback now. Andrew awesome. Ross, number six. Andrew is a 6'1 junior. Welcome to the game, Andrew, Andrew Ross. And uh, then we'll, we'll try to fill in the gaps on yep. some of these other, other players out there. Andrew Ross uh, in the shotgun. We thought Hudson would, uh, you know, rest some starters, and they are. In motion is Renta. There's uh, Ross keeping it on the left side. Makes it about third down. Third down and about five yards to go. <clears throat> I think a lot of the old Abe players are still in the game defensively. So I don't think they've changed a whole lot on the defensive side. 
And again, the whole half to go. I mean, you got to yeah. take that into consideration here, too. But let's see what happens here in third and about five. It's going to uh -oh. be the option play, and that's going to be a loose ball back in the backfield at about the 25-yard line. And, and that's where the old Aves will recover. That pitch was not very well done. And uh, that's a big turnover there. And here come the old Abes down 43 to seven. And let's see if they bring out their first team offense. Well, the, the scoreboard certainly doesn't indicate this as Hudson is clearly dominating this game 43 to seven. But defensively, Memorial has, uh, has played the run fairly well. You know, Miller had a nice run. Danielson had a nice run. But uh, on several of these running plays, the defense shifted pretty well and, uh, and, and bottled up Hudson. And, you know, that clearly happened there. You know, we're working with backups at this point. Johnson's in there again. The quarterback's going to throw deep. He's got a man out there at the pylon, but just a bit overthrown. He tried to hit, I believe, Tanner at the goal line. Incomplete pass. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and the uh, Johnson, that first half, was like 9 of 22 passing I had him for. So he's now 9 of 23. Yeah, if you're just joining us, uh, it's been all Hudson tonight. We've had the Kaiser Helter Brand show. We sure have. Four touchdowns and a passing touchdown. Here's Johnson to throw for the old Aves. That's complete at the 16-yard line. That was a nice pass and a nice catch to Tanner. And so well done there. Brings up third and about two yards to go. Sanibel Island, uh, Marla emailed back in is in Florida, so Joe, you were right. I have not been there, I sounds nice. I think I've nice. heard of it, I've never, I've had a little time in Florida, but not in Sanibel Island. Of course, cameraman John Reed and I were down in Tampa, Florida a couple years ago for the, we did production on the Hobie Baker Awards ceremony from Tampa oh, Theater. Nice. That was quite an experience. <laughs> I bet it, it was. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we won't touch that. Here's the Johnson rolling out. He's gonna try to get rid of it, and he just does before he's dumped on the play. Flag is down, kind of at about the 20 yard line. I don't think that's gonna be roughing the passer as far as I know. I think it's against Memorial. We got our microphone on the uh, His mic isn't referee. Working. Well, maybe. We just hope the coaches don't swear while we turn them up there for yeah. a second. Well, they marked it off, but they uh, they didn't tell us what yeah, it was. The mic doesn't work. So they're backing it up against the old Abe's to around the 29-yard line. It'll be holding offense, so holding the call. So it's third down and about 15 yards to go. <coughs> they send the plays out by poster on the old Abe side. Kind of hard to see all the way over there. Yeah, the, I don't know. I don't the think they took, took the fog into account. I'd have to have a neon on there. There's a pass over to the right side. It's intercepted, the 20-yard line. Up the sideline, the 40, cutting into the inside now. Now to the midfield, looking for blockers. Look at him go. Still on his feet at the 30, 25-20, penalty flag flies. And into the end zone, I don't know if he got there. They're gonna mark him down at the one-yard line. Lukens is the player who was the interceptor. Hunter Luke, that being Hunter Lukens, they're gonna they're gonna <coughs> they're gonna get Hudson for a hold or a block in the back on the return. Yep. Exciting, nonetheless. Second interception of the game on Johnson, and he's winded. <laughs> I would be too. Anyway, following up on the San, uh, Sanibel Islands, next next to Fort Myers, Florida, they're about three miles from the causeway that leads to Sanibel Island. It is in Southwest Florida. The temperature right now, down there, 82 degrees. Horrible. Why do people do that to us? There they might got the mic to work. From the spot of the foul, so. You heard half of it. The the foul was somewhere <laughs> around the 20 or 25 yeah. yard line. They backed it up to the 35. Moisture and electronics are a bad mix, and I think that's maybe with the on-field mics are having a little bit of issue tonight. Mr. Andrew Ross back in at quarterback. There's the inside handoff. And Hunter Danielson. Hunter Danielson. 
That's Hunter. Is that Cole's brother? The, I, I don't think they're related. I, I, uh, I know Cole's dad, Adam, and uh, Hunter's is all right. Tr Trisha's son. Let's see. Coming into the game to play some tight end for the Raiders, number eighty-five, Mike Munich or Munich, five ten senior, one hundred ninety-five pounds. Second down and eight. There's the hand up. Nope, the quarterback's going to keep it. Nice job by Ross. He gets to the 25-yard line or so, maybe just shy. Close to first down yardage for Ross. First down for Ross and the, and the Raiders. 5-13 to go. It's 43-7. Raiders looking for more here with the second string in there. There's the handoff to the right. Nothing there that time. <coughs> Boy, in the backfield, almost ready to to take the uh, the handoff was number 34, Austin Jarvis. It's interesting you mentioned that. We have an email coming in. And uh, the question, very simply, is what are your thoughts on Austin Jarvis or Old Clare Memorial? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty impressed with that. We've called his name multiple times. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. No doubt about that. Second down and 15. Ross in the shots. He's going to pass over the middle, threw it over everybody. Airmailed that one a bit. Ross pass falls incomplete. And it's the number 11, Kyle Kemper. Tried to hit Kemper. 409 to go, 43 7 the score. Kaiser Hilt Helderbrandt. Taking a nice breather. That's what you get when well you score earned. four touchdowns and throw for another. <laughs> I think he's earned the half off. I think he's uh, good. Well, and good sportsmanship by Adam Cowles. I would expect nothing other than that. He's one of the best coaches in the state. There's a pitch out left side. Running it is uh, Renta. Renta with a run to about the 20 yard line That's or inside that, out of bounds. Short of the first down. Got an email coming in from somebody we haven't heard from in a while. Glad to hear from him. Lee Livermore, former Hudson Raider from the mid-60s. Said he leaves in Madison tonight for the Badger uh, uh, Husker game tomorrow, that being Nebraska. He's streaming the game tonight. Good job, go Raiders. Great job, Brew Crew. As the Milwaukee Brewers go up 2-0. And Lee Livermore got put in the Hudson Hall of Fame here. I guess that was a couple years ago. And Nice job. Yeah. He had a great career here in undefeated seasons back in the mid-60s. Great great to hear from you, Lee. Hope all is well. There's the quarterback keeper. Loose football. It's down, and uh, I think the Raiders got back on it at the 10-yard line. Ross fumbled the football at the 15, fumbled it forward to the 10, but the Raiders got back on it, and that is a first down with 2.44 to go. Well, again, it's you know it's a slippery ball, and we got... Some guys that haven't seen a lot, a lot of action tonight here or this season. Yep. I think we are in running time, right? Yeah. No, I, I think it's been running for a yeah. bit here. Yeah. Whole half. It is the whole half, yeah. Okay. In Minnesota, it doesn't start till the fourth. That's the change. Yeah, they should need to change that in Minnesota, I think, too. There's an inside handoff. Nice little run head by Hunter Danielson. Hunter Danielson on the carry. Danielson gets it. Uh, to about the six. We've got a back and forth game over in Menominee with first place implications on the line. Menominee had fallen down 18 to 14 to Rice Lake. Menominee has scored early into the fourth quarter. It's back up 20 to 18 over the Warriors. And didn't we lose to Menominee here? Yes. Uh, Tight ball game. There's yep. a loose ball picked up by the old Abes. Another bad pitch and uh, it's a fumble. Gives the ball back to the old Abe's with 140 to go in the third. Yeah, it was a tight game, right? It was. It was good. Yes. You only scored seven points. How'd you only score seven? There wasn't it. It was, was a tw also? 20 to 17. Okay. Uh, Hudson led for most of the game. Uh, you know, give Menominee credit. They had they had a clutch fourth down conversion on fourth and goal late in the game. The th quarterback threaded it into double coverage. He he, he makes that throw. <laughs> you know, one in five times, and that happened to be the one. Hudson was driving for a potential uh, game-tying field goal late in the game as time ran out, but the, the Menominee defense held and good victory. 
Johnson's pass almost picked off as he got hit when he threw from the end zone. Incomplete pass. Johnson almost picked off there. And just as uh, Menominee and, and Hudson have had some battles, Rice Lake and Menominee have had some battles through the years. And Oh yeah, Rice Lake the defending Division Three state champs. We've got some rankings we're gonna talk about here. We can mention that after this play. Johnson in the shot, now into the end zone. He throws a little center screen out there. It's caught Johnson to about the 11 yard Jarvis. line or so. Jarvis with the catch. Jarvis, we'll give him three or so on that. Johnson now 11 of 27. And Hudson, Johnson after Jackson dropping out of the top 10, having been ranked in the top 10 all season by WisconsinSports.net, has now moved back into the top 10. Uh, I believe they're number eight. I don't have the rankings right in front of me, but they dropped out briefly, but now they're back into the top 10. And other teams in the section, Bayport, Kimberly, Green Bay, probably we can talk about that here in a little bit. We're going to break for the quarter. All right, 43-7 the score. One more quarter to go. More fun coming your way after this. Hudson football. Welcome back. Quarter number four here. Raider football on your Hudson broadcast station. Glad you could be with us. Joe Dunford along with John Wecken. Also two on uh, live on the River Channel, Channel 15 here locally. Yes, sir. There's a nice pass up the left side. Complete. Johnson's pass complete as he hits Howe. Howe with about an eight-yard catch there. Well, no more than I said that Menominee took the lead back. The Rice Lake takes the lead back now, 26-20. Back and forth they go. They got a good one going over there at Williams Stadium, about 45 miles east of here. First place, Big Rivers Conference title implications in play in that one. We have running time here now, 43-7 the score. Johnson to throw, and he completes it at the 30-yard line, pickup of 10. That was a nice catch by, uh, that was number eight. Let me check that here. Tanner with the catch. Calvin having a nice game. You, know, you look at all those, those light standards, you know, what it looks like is like 4th of July after you've had a ton of fireworks going off. You just have that smoke, that yeah. thick haze, and that's what it looks like. What a fantastic scoreboard they have here. Oh yeah. That's fantastic. There's the quarterback keeper, he's got some room. 45, or he's at the 40, he's going to wheel around, and then he goes down. Johnson Looks like a player just Campbell grabbed him by a pad or something at the 37-yard line, and he went down. He was trying to go wide. That player's Theron Haynes, 6-foot, 200-pound sophomore, seeing some action tonight. We got just a handful of sophomores. Sage Lewis being one of them, he had a couple nice runs there in the in the first half, very fast. I'd, Lewis had a, had a run here a few games ago. I just was amazed at his speed. Johnson will wheel around and look left. He's going to throw it up there, and it's going to be caught at the 40 and out of bounds. Nope, inbounds to the 34-yard yes, yes. line. Nicely done. About a 29-yard pass, but a penalty flag back. And it's going to be holding on the Raiders. So that play is going to stand. Penalties declined. A couple other quick score updates. River Falls all over Superior. That one's up in Superior. Looks like the uh, Wildcats are going to move to 7 and 1. 28 0. That one in the tail end of the third quarter. Again, Rice Lake 26 20 over uh, Menominee. And it's final. Chippewa Falls knocks off Eau Claire North 42 6. Oof. Been a not long much, year for not North. Much of a game there. There's a pitch out left side and good running room. Roberts goes to the 24 yard line. 9.08 and counting on this one. <coughs> so if they get a touchdown, does that stop the clock? It, it, it does. It, uh, you have to maintain the, the 35 point okay. or more cushion and then if, if you cut into that running time stops. Kind of figured that, but uh, I knew you yep. would know. I don't know much, but I do know that one. <laughs> Good. There's a pass. Looking for the end zone. Just overthrown a bit. Johnson's pass falls incomplete. 
Johnson's had a up and down game a little bit tonight. He's had some nice passes, and then yeah. he'll throw an interception or or whatever. They throw the ball a lot. Not much of a running game here for no. the uh, for the old Abe's. Well, he's been pressured all night. The the Hudson Raider secondary coverage has has been very solid as it's been really all year for the most part. And uh, you know, yeah, receivers aren't getting separation. He's gotten roughed up pretty good tonight. Third and about one. They got the first down. Nice handoff. Roberts, I think, gets the uh, first down. It was. Under eight minutes to play. Yeah. And again, like we said, uh, Lee Livermore's down in uh, in Madison, taking in going to take in the Badger Nebraska game tomorrow. Iowa Minnesota hookup over at TCF, just a few miles from here. Good day of college football tomorrow. Handoff left side, some running room there to about the 13-yard line. Dating back to 2002, the Raiders are 10 and six yeah. against the old Abe's over those 16 games. So interesting. In the eight years, this is our eighth season covering Hudson football. With the win here tonight, Hudson will be six and two. Excuse me, six and two regular season against the old Abe's. <coughs> eight and two total as they knocked them out in the playoffs in the first round uh, in 12 and 13. So they've won eight out of 10 And when these two teams have matched up in the years we've done this. Johnson rolls right, being rushed. Look out, he gets hammered, gets rid of the ball, and it's gonna be a touchdown for the old Aves. Johnson took a big hit down there, but it's a touchdown for the old Aves. Looks like uh, Julian Graham, I believe, number 14 was the recipient. Six foot, 155 pound junior, Graham. Fourth quarter, 6.52. That does stop the clock for the extra point here. And the kick line drive and uh, it's through. So nice drive there. Timeout on the field. 6.52 to go in this one. It's 43-14. All Raiders on a gloomy night here in Hudson. All right, the kick. Back to the Raiders after that touchdown pass from Johnson for the old Abe's. And they get it out to about the 29 or 30 yard line. Clock stops at 644. Clock's back to stopping. Get we heard, just heard from our sponsors, Big Guys Barbecue. I know they got the game on out there and just a tremendous place outside of town, north on 35 and great fish fry and barbecue. Nice big place. We had our banquet there last year. Just great, great place to go. Oh, that sounds good right now. It does. Maybe we'll go out there when this one's done. Yeah. <laughs> barbecue. Post game barbecue. I want to thank all of our sponsors. Willow River Inn, Hudson Bowling Center, the Village Inn. On-site apparel, Wisconsin Credit Union, Hudson Ford, the Boosters, the Bench Warmers, McDonald Insurance. Who are the Bench Warmers? That is the support, parent support staff for the Very nice. Hudson Raiders football team. Very nice. More information on them at HudsonFootball.org. Jake Miller took that snap and went to the right, and he was looking for somebody else to pitch it to, and nobody else was there, so he just... <laughs> Hung on to it and took the took the heat. Nice. And now he's back again. Jake's a 5'11 senior quarterback. He's the third quarterback of the night for Hudson. Here's the option. He's going to keep it this time and cuts it up. Ball comes loose at the 30, and the Raiders got back on it. It's about the third fumble here, second half for the Raiders. And I'll t you know, the, the score up there is 43-14, but Hudson had 43 points at halftime. And, and to, to be perfectly blunt and perfectly honest, if they'd have kept their starters in, I don't know if, if they could have, if Memorial could have stopped them from putting up 70 points tonight. I mean, they were that dominant in the first half. Yeah. I agree. Didn't seem to be that hard to get to 43 tonight. They were all over 
the uh, defense of the old Abe's. There's a pass left side incomplete. Miller overshot his receiver. That was going to try to get to Carter Herrink, a 6'4 sophomore wide receiver. So it's third down, and we have a whole host of new players coming in on both sides. No, it's fourth down. So it's punting situation. That's why they're coming in. I believe it's the first punt. Back, I know it is. He's got the pink socks on. You notice there. that for cancer awareness. We're Very seeing a lot nice. of pink out there for. Good snap. Get it away. Yes, he did. Nice job. That was Phillips. What'd they call him? Tornado Torrin. Tornado Torrin. Very nice. Good punt. 36 yard line. Like Hurricane Hazel. From the Milwaukee Braves from many, many years ago. Jeez, I, great nicknames. Should I have my my pregame show now since I didn't have it before? <laughs> Let's do your pregame show now. <laughs> <laughs> so next week we got Chippewa Falls on the road. Huh? One and four, one yeah. and four. That should not be uh, overly difficult, I wouldn't think. Well, anytime you, it's a Duray Field and Chippewa Falls won big tonight over a North team that hasn't okay. won at all. Okay. But. Uh, Hudson would be the favorite in that, but again, you, you, and they're going to stress it in practice this week, I'll guarantee you. We're not going to look past them. I don't want to talk no. about playoffs right. and rankings and, and all that. You know, Coach Cowles and his staff are going to remind stu uh, their players that this week. You remember last year when we did the game in Eau Claire? They have that field right on the uh, the point there, the island or whatever they call it. The oh, Carson Park. Carson Park. Took we an were, hour to we get out of there. We were stuck there for an hour. Yeah, oh yeah. Just turned on some music and enjoyed yeah, the show. Yeah, we just took it easy. We could have... Yep. Brought a grill and had a little uh, we should have a little barbecue after. Or we should have stopped at your barbecue spot well, here. Big, and big guys it over barbecue. There. I'm, big think, guys I'm, I'm thinking about that right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, a little pulled pork or uh, oh, something. There's a long pass incompletes. Some brisket. Oh, they have everything out there. Just just oh, one nice place, and I they must have about a hundred. About 100 TVs out there or more. And a uh, great place to watch a Packer game or anything else. Or just uh, go have some dinner. It, it's wonderful. Uh, Village Inn, same thing. <laughs> it's one of my places. I go to coffee. And Lee uh, Lee Halverson over there does a tremendous job supporting so many things. And another great place to watch Hudson Raider football. I'm sure they got it on there tonight. All right. Johnson's going to hand off. And that's... That's going to be Tock, Easton Tock on the carry, a sophomore running back. So the last victory that uh, Memorials had over Hudson was 2015, a 29-17 victory. Yes, that was over in Carson Park, and, and Memorial really died. 2015, Hudson was a little bit down. It's the one, one year out of eight years we had a losing season, and, and Memorial really, really put it to Hudson pretty good that night. I remember that one. Okay. 143 to go. 43 14 the score. Johnson to pass for the old Abe's. Nice pass, complete at the 37. Tanner with another catch. 15th completion for uh, Johnson, I think, tonight, unofficially. Tanner's got six catches for, for about 83 yards or so. Helen emails in, says, what senior at Eau Claire Memorial has the most potential? I, I would have to say Jarvis. I mean, for what, it, it, you know, we're just getting a kind of a, yeah. just a small snapshot here. And, you know, they're rotating players in and out, not near as much as Hudson. But, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, o o Memorial's had some good teams through the years. Don't get me wrong. This yeah. really isn't their year. But, uh, you know, they, they were, they were, they've gone to the playoffs multiple times. That's a neat setting down there, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I like that. There's a nice pass downfield. It's caught at the eight-yard line. Flag on the play. Tanner makes the catch. It was about a 30-yard pass with 33 seconds to go and counting. Defensive pass <laughs> interference, and they're going to decline it. So a good pass. Tanner with the catch. Gets him over the 100 yard mark for catching yards tonight. 13 seconds to go, probably last play right here. Johnson throws to the end zone. It's right at the line. They're gonna give him a touchdown. Touchdown Old Abe's as he hit Julian Graham for the second time. Well he got in by the nose of the football because Hudson had that bottled up. They had 
double coverage down there on the right corner. Just kind of a, a rollout. So the old Abes get on the board again. That was a nice pass play from about six yards out. I'll give credit uh, where credit's due here. Memorial still out there fighting, even though this game was really over, but halftime for the most part. And the kick is up and good. Let's take a quick break. Be back with the final recap of this one after this. Well, the score is a little more respectable here for the end of the game. Here's the kick. That should end it. Uh, no, it's not. It's going to go out of bounds. <laughs> we, we keep kicking the ball out of I bounds tonight. That. I don't know what the deal is. but So now we do have to play one more play with 5.4 seconds to go. So it looks better for the Aves. It's 43-21. It, it does, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> that score by no means re, re, accurately reflects how dominant Hudson was tonight. I mean, they, they, they Hudson really played it easy in the second as well they should it absolutely you know yep. and a lot of players got some play time tonight which is great you know great uh, crowd here particularly in homecoming despite the fact and again it was uh, weather is really not <laughs> the best but when you're winning and everybody's happy you can live with it all right last play of the game late uh, late arriving on the field for the Raiders is Renta Victory formation, the kneel down, and that's it. It's over. 43 to 21, the final score. The Raiders really had no difficulty in this one. They had it from the beginning, and Kaiser Helterbrand had just a fantastic night. Four touchdowns, one passing touchdown. You can't beat that kind of play at all from a quarterback, and he's a good one. Let's take a break and be back and recap this one. The Raiders get the victory on homecoming on a uh, foggy evening in Hudson. Back with more after this. Well, it was all Hudson tonight, folks. Uh, homecoming, a very happy homecoming. Everybody got a little wet out here. A nice drizzle pretty much throughout the game, a fog. Uh, boy, if you look at the lights, it's kind of a, a cool thing to see up there that's for sure with the, oh, yeah. this, the drizzle coming down but but uh, you know when you're up 43-7 at the half you've had a pretty good half and the Raiders didn't need any po more points they obviously put a lot of other people in the game the second half and did not score you know credit to uh, the old Abes for hanging in there they pretty much had their first string offense mm -hmm. in there for most of the game and so they got a couple touches um, you know late in the in the fourth quarter to make it somewhat respectable, 43-21. But uh, as John and I were talking about, this game, you know, could have easily been 60 or 70 to seven or something yeah. like that. I mean, uh, Helterbrand was was just unstoppable here tonight. Just a fantastic game. He had a 46-yard pass to Carls to start things off in the first. He had a five-yard run. After that, 14 nothing. Still in the first, just 38 seconds to go. A three-yard run. Um, by Lewis that time. Lewis had uh, had his touchdown that time. And then in the second quarter, it was Helterbrand from one yard out. Uh, it was uh, old Abe's getting on the board with five minutes to go, a 14-yard pass to Howe to make it 28-7. to Hudson again before the half, a 70-yard run by Helterbrand, one that uh, he's going to be able to watch for oh, yeah. the rest of his life and smile. And uh, he, he blew a, about three or four guys off him, uh, breaking tackles. He went, he went about uh, 95 yards to go 70 and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and got the touchdown. And that was a fantastic run. And then he got a five-yard run again. Uh, the extra point good is 43-7 to seven at the half. And that was uh, just a fantastic half of football for him and the Raiders. And then a couple touchdowns for the old Abes. A couple Johnson passes to Graham. To make it 43-21, so so they go to what seven and one and five and one. Seven seven and one overall, uh, five and one in the Big Rivers Conference. And if they win, if Menominee loses, and right now it's 26-20 Rice Lake. I mean, there, there's we're still waiting for uh, monitoring that game, waiting for a final. Um, and and even if Menominee wins, River Falls has already won. They they won big. They rolled tonight up in Superior. That's going to knock Superior out of playoff. Uh, 
eligibility and you know river falls has just been a tremendous team they that program has been down for a long time and i knew in week three we beat them 28 27 and it was a, it was a touch and go ending there and i told the guys from rice lake they were announcing in the room next door and i said you guys are for real and they said well, i don't know i said i'm telling you that you are and and they have been and they've been down for a lot it's, that's been the great story so if Menominee comes back and wins, Rice Lakes or uh, River Falls has already won. We won tonight. If all three win, it, could, it would be a tri-champ scenario. Huh. What, you're, what you really want to pull for is Rice Lake knocking off Menominee yeah. and then River Falls in Hudson. And then if Hudson wins next week, regardless of what River Falls does, even if River Falls wins, it would, it would be a, a tie between River Falls and Hudson. Hudson takes the conference championship by virtue of the, of the head-to-head. How win. about that? So we'll see. We'll see. Well, that'll be fun, and and it's Chippewa uh, next week on the road, and you'll be the uh, you'll be there, I would imagine. We will. In fact, I just I just got a I just got an update. Rice Lake has beaten Menominee, twenty six twenty. How about that? Wow. Which means Hudson and River Falls sitting atop the Big Rivers Conference at six and one. Excuse me, five and one. If Hudson wins next week. They win, the, they win the conference championship, regardless of if River Falls wins. Fantastic. The, uh, it's on the table for them, that's for sure. So Absolutely. They just don't want to uh, get too overconfident and go to Chippewa. And, that's correct. And, uh, you know, not play well. So good luck and see what happens to them uh, next week. Should be fun. And then it's on to the playoffs. And uh, good chance if that works mm-hmm. out, they'll be hosting, won't they? Well, they will. And it's... it's uh, the meeting will take place on Saturday. The, the, the regular season will end on Friday. and it's Hudson's going to be in a tough section. They're going to be in there with Bayport, who's undefeated, Kimberly, who's ranked number two at one loss, the four-time defending champion, uh, Green Bay Prebles in there, Appleton North, very strong. You know, it, it's going to be a tough set. It's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, a lot of things can happen between now and then. I think next week you have to go on the road and beat Chippewa Falls, and then things will kind of sort it out from there. But, you know, you know, big win here tonight. Obviously, Rice Lake going into Menominee, beating Menominee, really helps the cause. You go to Chippewa Falls, and you come home with the conference championship and then the playoffs from there. Fantastic. The, uh, the scenario is set, and, and we'll see how it plays out. Should be fun. Tonight was an excellent contest, and uh, 43-21, the final score here tonight for the Hudson Raiders on homecoming. A, a happy homecoming here tonight on a wet evening. Glad you could join us. Thanks to all our great sponsors again. And, John, uh, any final thoughts? Well, thank you for uh, <laughs> yeah. for coming in and uh, subbing in for, yeah. for, for Joe Moore and, uh, you know, Overcoming the adversity of the of the keys locked in the car and fighting through traffic and bad yeah. weather to get here and always a pleasure working with you. We're going to do it again and uh, to, to John Reed for running the camera uh, as always and um, again our great sponsors and thank you one and all for tuning in tonight. I know we had a lot of people tuned in and and uh, emailed in from all over. Good to hear from you. And tune in next week. Uh, we take go on the road and take on Chippewa Falls and then we'll sort the playoffs out on Saturday. Sounds good. Stay dry out there, everybody. Enjoy the fall and uh, another broadcast coming your way next week right here on Hudson Broadcasting. And uh, go Raiders. Let's see what happens. Have a nice rest of your weekend. So long, everybody.